lot of people start their next talk by going into the bowels of their computer and finding an old presentation and do a save as, doll it up and think they're brilliant. Right? And that's not the right way to start any great talk. You need to really think empathetically about who am I talking to? When I propose my idea, how's it going to affect them? What change am I asking them to go through and what part of that's going to scare them? Because you don't want them to resist you. You want them to embrace you. So you have to think through, like, what are all the roadblocks they're going to throw out in their mind? What are, how are they going to resist? And we propose that you just you don't open your slides yet. You think about the whole problem. So we use sticky notes, we use storyboards, we use a whole lot of other tools long before we'll open up presentation software. So we'll a sticky note, brainstorm, put it up on a wall, ask four people, hey, what do you think? This is what I'm thinking. And they'll have a different perspective than yours because as you're building your content, you're not that other person. So you don't even know. You don't even understand. Sometimes they'll have the stupidest reasons why they're going to resist you. It's stupid. But someone that's bopping by might be like, you know, someone might think of this really dumb why, reason why they don't want to jump on board with your idea. So collecting perspectives that you maybe hadn't considered can put just the right elements in your talk that will overcome any resistance that might be thrown out there by the audience and, and help them to adopt. Another thing that's kind of powerful about looking at the whole thing is you're looking at the sum and not the parts. When you go into presentation software, you're creating ideas in a linear fashion and it's all chronological. But when you can look at the whole idea, you can know if it's going to work or not before you start even building a single slide. So I think that's the power of actually spending time thinking uh, away, sometimes changing your environment, going in a different room, putting on a different kind of music, you know, working from home in the morning, whatever inspires you, um, you should move into that environment and create. Making presentations is a creative process. So much of what we do during the day is kind of analytical, linear, problem solving, but creating a presentation is creative, which means you have to uh, be effective. And, and having an opportunity to be, to be in the same room with a bunch of other people and build consensus or uh, persuade them to adopt your ideas is so powerful. So I feel like however much time you spend in it should be proportionate to what's at stake. So if you mm, have a staff meeting and you're doing a project status update and you have a bunch of timelines to review, that's very different than making a $15 million pitch or you know, closing a big round of funding or getting the stage at you know, a big conference with 10,000 people in the audience. Those are all really high stakes. So you can spend an enormous amount of time. A lot of executives will spend up to, up to 60 hours just making, reviewing, finessing, and then of course most execs get a, an epiphany in the shower the day of and then it just <laughs> throws everything on its head. Um, but they, they spend a lot of time in their heads, you know, finessing and thinking, what do I want to say, how do I want to say it, what's the best way to do it? So if you count even, even the time when they're thinking about it and practicing it, it, it could take a lot of time when it's really high stakes. When I wrote Resonate, um, it was so fun, like taking a journey through story, story structure, storytelling. It was about three years of research, and you can't, can't really be a student of story and not have it change you. Because I knew that there was a big gap between a storyteller and a presenter, but I, didn't, I couldn't tell why. Like, why is it that we're like, love a story, but think presentations are boring? And so I took a trip through story and wanted to figure out what is it that creates tension in a story and releases it, that moment of catharsis. Like, that's what we live for. And we also kind of live for this transformation. How did they change in the process? How did the protagonist change? So once I uh, really understood story principles, I started to study the greatest speeches. I studied Dr. King. I have a book, 100 Greatest Speeches of All Times. And I went through the whole book, and I tried to see a pattern. When did they build tension, and how did they release it? So I found a pattern that great communicators create tension and release it by establishing what is and contrasting that with what could be. So they talk about the current state, they talk about its blight, they talk about why it's not great. But look, here's where we could all be if we all align, but look, here's what's going on, here's why it's not good, but look, here's, here's what could be. And they move people through their talk using that as a structural device so that by the end, that we're, we are creatures of contrast, so by the time they actually can see the contrast, there's no doubt that they should move toward the future where your idea is adopted. prepare for a great talk, you need to establish the big idea. 
then a big idea has two components. It has your perspective, your unique point of view, and it has what's at stake. Because if there's nothing at stake, you don't need to communicate. Um, there's either something at stake that's good or something at stake that's bad if they do or do not adopt your idea. So you need to write what is my big idea and then you use that big idea as a filter for every single thing you put into your talk. And a big idea should be in the form of a sentence and it should be emotionally charged because there's something at stake and then that, um, that helps you create your talk. Um, but then you also need to think through how are you wanting your audience to transform? So you ask yourself what am I trying to move them from and what am I trying to move them to? What manner of behaving and believing am I moving them away from? What manner of behaving am I trying to move them toward? And you have to figure that out. And between the big idea and the move from, move to, you shouldn't even start your talk. And then everything that goes in supports that. So if you're trying to move them to believe that your finances are accurate or whatever, you'd use more charts. If you're trying to move them emotionally because of, you'd use more stories. So you also have to know them well enough to know does this audience react to facts or do they react to emotion? Now, even if you're talking to a highly analytical audience like biotech or finance department, whatever, they're still human. So even if you do something that's heavily weighted facts, you should still wrap it in a thin veneer of story because they still are moved by the heart and not just the mind.